that that's so touching. Thank you, Sue. Our final reader is Mari Ness. Short fiction author and poet Mari Ness has been featured in Tor.com, Clocks World, Uncanny, Lightspeed, Nightmare, Apex, Nature Futures, Diamelical Plats, Fireside, Daily Science Fiction, and multiple other venues. Wow. For more, check Twitter at, at Mari Underbar Ness or mariknes.wordpress.com. That'll be in the chat in a moment. Mari, it's yours. Uh, so this is not what I originally planned to read, but I thought we could use maybe a little bit of um, humor after the uh, dying mammoths. <laughs> so, um, so let's try this. So you want to reach the witch at the edge of the void. One. No, <laughs> you don't. Two. Trust us on this. Personal experience. You're really going to insist on this? <sighs> well, first, prepare to spend a lot of credits. And we do mean a lot of credits. Enough money to buy a medium-ranked planet was what we heard, and that turned out to be an underestimate. Of course, you can buy your own ship. But one capable of getting you there will probably cost you enough money to buy a low rank planet. Uh, you know, consider just buying your own planet instead. Because, and we can't stress this too strongly, she's out on the edge of the void, which is off the major passenger routes for a reason. Sure. You can find the occasional inhabited planet out there in the far, far ends of the spiral arms, but almost all of them, including the one she supposedly comes from, are small or violent or miserable or some combination of the lot. And you'll almost certainly have to stop at one at least to avoid space madness. And yes, this includes her own planet. The red light that bays its surface is deceptive. The planet is cold and dusty and cold. We're not big fans of calling planets after a single feature, but in this case, we're willing to call it misery. Security, probably. Good half of the galaxy probably wants her dead at this point. Maybe she just likes looking out into the void, thinking of all the galaxies she'll never visit. We did call the place Misery, and oh yes, she is the most beautiful creature of your species that you have ever seen, of any species. It's all a trick, of course, but it's a good one. And oh yes, she's said to have an insatiable appetite for attractive persons of all genders and species, both sexually and, uh, yeah, um, <laughs> gustatorily. That's not a trick, just a rumor, and one we can't confirm from personal experience. But we do know that fortunes and planets have been thrown at her feet for the pleasure of spending a single night with her despite the dust and the cold. <laughs> her spells cost even more. Trust us. Oh, and the cost of a near shipload of island items, jewels, rare elements, even two small kittens that we thought she might enjoy, associated as they are with her profession. Uh, yeah, a, a gray kitten and an orange kitten. How did you? <laughs> you don't really need us to answer these questions. You just wanted to know if we'd been there if you'd identified the right targets. <laughs> and now you've let us identify the right targets. <laughs> no, we can't put our weapons down or stop the incoming robots. Neither can you. She is after all a witch and very good at her job. We did tell you that you didn't really want to reach her. 
Uh, and that's the end of that story. It looks like I have a couple more minutes left, so I'm going to flip over to a poem, uh, which is called Good People. Uh, it somewhat uh, reflects my feelings at the moment uh, with certain elements of our society. Good people. Later, they said it was the way she kept watching the sky, the way she kept bending to stare at the castle swans, the way they kept finding nettles scattered in her bed, the way the servant saw her stealing through the gates at night, the way the prince had fallen in love so suddenly, all reason surely to send her to the stake. <laughs> not, not her silence. Oh, no. And not the scars on her hands. They were quite decent people, you understand, all of them. Even the queen, concerned only with the safety of son and kingdom. Even the ministers urging death. Even the crowd cheering on the flames. Good people. All, with good reasons. All, to think the girl an ogre, a witch, a monster in disguise. Not people who would condemn a girl with scars on her wrists or condemn a girl who could not speak. No, good people, decent, kind-hearted, all, with good reasons to burn a girl at the stake. Afterwards, others crept in to pick over the remains, saying not a word when the white feathers and blood clung to their bandages, their canes. And later, when they told the tale, they said, it had a happy ending. But the king was good, as was the queen. They were good people, after all, quite decent and good at telling tales. The end. Mm -hmm.